Hi guys, uh, today we're going to make a quick video about this uh, tiny little water pump here. Um, if you get in the codes 2EAA or 2EA9, they refer to the exhaust turbocharged coolant pump, which is uh, this little fella here. Uh, and I want to tell you uh, straight up, it's got nothing to do with your exhaust system, not because you straight parked your car or because you're running catalysts. Uh, the reason why this is called an exhaust turbocharger coolant pump is because uh, it drains coolant out of the turbochargers. All right? The flow of the coolant is out of the turbocharger into the pump, the pump and then to the radiator. That's the reason why they got this name. Um, and this is a very, very tricky one. The reason being is because this pump actually burns out really, really quickly. In my case, as quickly as 30 minutes. So I put a brand new pump into the car. It was actually a fully rebuilt engine. Uh, the pump was in there, it was a new pump. I started the car, I clear all the codes, started the car, I run it for probably five or ten minutes and then five or ten minutes again on the day after I run for another five or ten minutes. So it was a total of about 30 minutes that the engine was on and then I scanned the car again and I saw the, the codes for the first time. I've never seen those codes before and then the codes were there. Uh, I researched a little bit, they related to this pump and then uh, I had to order a new one, order for US obviously because uh, here in Australia it's just it's about $400 for a pump, while in the US you're going to pay about uh, 90, 90, 95 US dollars for this. Uh, by the way, I'm putting the part number on the, on the description. Uh, and then I had to wait for about a week and a half for the pump to arrive. Uh, during that time, I, so I was just decided to understand why this blew up, why it wasn't work. This one is actually seized, so I can plug into power, I can hear a bit of a sound inside, but the propeller is seized up. I open it up and it doesn't move at all. Even by hand, if I try to rotate it by hand, it, it won't rotate it. Um, but anyway, I want to talk to you guys what I found out about these guys and uh, what you can do to replace and most uh, importantly, how can you avoid getting a burned out pump again because I've seen reports of people going through two or three pumps before they realize what they're doing wrong. Why that happened? Why the pump burned out? Uh, this is a common point of failure on the S63 and on the N63 engines. Uh, however, by what I've learned, it's very common that these pumps go out after some repairs being done to the radiator system. So whether you replace your expansion tank or you had some hose that had to be replaced, so you, you, you flush your coolant system and you put new coolant in. The reason why these burns is because the coolant system hasn't been bled up properly or you have some air trapped in the system. Uh, the design of it is not really perfect as, as well. So as you can see, it's got some errors uh, on the direction of the flow of the coolant. And with most engines, so at least all of the engines that I worked out so far, the coolant will always travel upwards because if there's any air trapped or if there's any bubbles in the system, the bubbles will automatically be pushed up and go back to the reservoir. But in this case, in the case of this little pump, and they're going to be sitting in front of the engine like kind of this, is actually pushing the fluid down, it's pushing the coolant, it's pulling the coolant out of the turbochargers, it comes into the hose and then back into the engine. So there's just no way that this thing is going to bleed itself up. If you don't bleed the coolant system, if you don't vacuum fuel the coolant system properly, you're going to have an issue and these are going to burn out again and again and again and again. Now, another thing that I want to make clear is that if you don't know yet, the S63 and the N63 engines, they have two complete independent coolant systems. Uh, the first one, which is what I call the main system, is uh, the one that cools down your engine, cools down your turbos, and it's also what heats up your air conditioning in winters. Uh, and the second one, which is what BMW calls the low temperature system, is uh, there purely to run the intercoolers on your car. So remember the low temperature system and those uh, two big electric water pumps that are one on the right side of the car, the other one on the left side of the car, they have absolutely nothing to do with these guys or they get nothing to do with the faults that you are getting. Uh, they are just there to run the intracooler system. Uh, so back to the main system. The main system is made up by two water pumps or it's actually three water pumps but the third one is just a tiny little pump that runs the AC heater. We're not going to worry about that. But the main pump in the S63 and the N63 is actually a mechanical pump. So that's the big pump in front, in front of your engine. And the other pump is uh, this little guy, which is the pump that we are talking about today. 
Now, I know you might be saying this, or you might say that my mechanic replaced this one or that one, and there's this pump here or the other pump there. Forget about these two pumps either. There's this pump on the left-hand side of the car, and there's the other one on the right-hand side of the car, which is just behind the radiator. And I'm going to say that once again. These pumps are for the intercooler system. They have absolutely no relation to the errors that we're talking about. They have absolutely no relation to the turbo water pump that we're talking about. Let's focus on this little pump because 99% of the, the times, the issues for these two codes that we're getting, uh, the problem is just the pump. That could be uh, an electrical failure, there could be some issues with the wiring, so there could be an issue with the DME, but I highly doubt that that's going to be the case. Um, so we're going to we're going to talk about how to test them. It's it's very very easy to actually test these pumps. Uh, they actually have. Uh, if you turn around, you're going to be able to see the plug connectors, and it's written at the back. So if you if you already got the pump out, so all that you got to do is uh, just hook up some wires or plugs, so just make a little connector, uh, plug it into your battery. But again, if you are testing the pump this way, just make sure you be brief, all right? So don't let it run for more than five seconds. If you plug the pump in there and you see the pump is spinning around, you, you already know that the pump is working. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you're going to plug it in and nothing's going to happen. Now, the third... The third wire is actually a signal, so this is what tells the DME how fast the pump is turning or if the pump is turning, and that's how the, 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 the errors are actually triggered, because the DME realized that the pump is not working, and that's, that's why it shows that error. Uh, but yeah, this is how you test the pump. What you also need to test is uh, the connector. If you test your pump and the pump is not running, it's not brand new. Buy a new pump, put a new pump in, leave the system properly and then you're good to go. But if the pump is running, you need to check for continuity on the wires or you need to test the wires itself. Very, very easy way of doing it. Again, since these are already identified, you know which one is the positive, which one is the negative terminal. Uh, you just put the connector in front of it, so you're gonna realize which one on the connector is a positive and negative. And you basically can do two things. You can either plug a multimeter into that connector and see if you got voltage or not, or you can also just uh, wire up a little light bulb or an LED and you plug it in there to see if you have 12 volts. Now, one thing that is very important to mention is that this pump does not run 100% of the time. No. This pump only runs when the engine is up to temperature or when the engine reaches a certain temperature. So that's also one of the reasons why it's... If you want to do this test, you can uh, clear the codes. With the, when the car is cold, you clear all the codes you start up the engine, see if the code come back. Most likely the codes are not going to come back for probably 5 minutes or 10 minutes, depending on the temperature where, where you live. Once the car gets up to temperature, that's when the DME triggers the pump to run. If the pump is seized, the DME is going to realize the pump is not working and it's going to throw those two errors. So uh, this is what happens. Uh, that's why it's very, very important if you are testing for the connector on your car, if you are testing for voltage there, if you're testing with the car coach, it doesn't matter you're going to crank the ignition on because for the first 5 or 10 minutes, this pump is not going to run. So you need to make sure the car is up to temperature for it to test, otherwise you're not going to get the result that you're wanting. Now, with, uh, with replacing the pump is pretty easy. If you already got the pump out, you're probably going to do the same thing on the reverse order. Uh, for the X5M, I didn't have to remove much at all. In fact, I think it, it took me about 10 minutes to replace the pump and uh, probably half an hour to bleed the coolant system properly because you need to drain all the coolants, uh, plug the vacuum kit in, bring your compressor, you need to run the compressor to fill up with vacuum and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's got to be done. It's got to be done properly. I don't have any videos of the actual pump being replaced, but it's a straight up forward. Uh, again, on the X5M, I remove some of the plastics around the engine bay. I remove uh, both of the air filters, and then I was able to see the pump already. Um, I think I removed the hoses first. I'm not, not, not too sure, but not even the belt. The serpentine belt doesn't have to be removed. So I, I twisted a little bit to the side. I was able to remove the bolts that hold the bracket in place, and I removed the pump completely with the brackets. Uh, that's for the S X5M and for the M5s probably because it's the S63. 
the N63 engines run pretty much the same, but the location of the, the pump and probably the reservoir is slightly different. On the X5M, the, the reservoir is on the left-hand side. I've seen on the N63, it sits in front of the engine or something, but again, shouldn't be much of a problem. Uh, just replace the pump and make sure you bleed the system properly. Now, why are we talking about bleeding the system? There's another thing that I saw, and uh, it's a lot of misunderstandings of what you can do, what you cannot do. Can I bleed the system by holding the throttle pedal down to the floor and then turning the AC off? No. 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 Absolutely not, and I'll tell you why. Uh, that bleeding procedure only works on the N55 engines and the reason being is because the N55 engines have electric water pump so when you do that you activate the pump the coolant is flowing through the engines uh, with the S63 and the N63 both water pumps are mechanical so you're not going to be able to circulate the fluid in your engine unless the engine is on and that's why it's so important that you have to do the process correctly uh, make sure that you have the heater on so the fluid is also circulating. I don't know if you're going to do a flush. It's always a good idea to do a complete flush in the cooling system uh, when you're doing this because uh, these cars do require some good quality coolants and they have to be replaced every few years or every two years or three years or so. Uh, it's a good idea to do that when you're replacing the, the pump. Uh, but I saw someone doing the bleed procedure on an X5M or I saw them doing on an uh, on an N63 engine and he was explaining that you have to hold the, the throttle pedal to the floor and uh, yes it works that process works with the low temperature cooling system that process works and actually I'm gonna put a video this is uh, when I finished rebuilding the engine I put everything together and here I was bleeding the low pressure cooling system and that is the procedure Right, you, you, I, I don't remember exactly how it is, but you have to hold the you turn the ignition on, you turn the heat to the max, and then you hold the throttle pedal to the floor for about 10 seconds or so, and then your coolant starts to circulate through the engine. But again, it doesn't circulate through the engine, it circulates through the intercooler and through the radiator because their procedure only works for the low temperature coolant system. I think I was clear now. Anyway, I hope this video has made things a little bit easier for you guys. I hope this helps uh, you fixing up the issue with your car. It uh, doesn't take two or three pumps for you to, 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 to diagnose. But nevertheless, uh, check in the channel. I have a bunch of videos coming up for the S63 and for the N63 engine. And why are we talking about this? I need to ask you guys a favor. If this video was helpful, just uh, click the like button and please subscribe to the channel because for whatever reason, a lot of people are watching the videos, but they're not subscribing yet. So, yeah, give the thumbs up. Uh, if you have any any doubts or anything that I can help you with, write down in the comments below, and I would be more than happy to come up with an answer or try to diagnose you, see what's going on. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Goodbye for now.